This is Flappy Boy Chapter 13, Creating an Animated Bird. So, after all the work that we've done looking at this little sphere, the time has finally come to do a little bit of animation. Animation is a huge topic, and we could spend many, many hours discussing it. But for now, I just want to get you familiar with the basic character tool for creating a character definition file and attaching some animations and materials so that you can get this working. And also understanding the basic principle of using a character controller. So the first step is we need to go to the Tools menu under Animation and open the Character tool. You're going to want to make this full screen because there's a lot to it. Now we've supplied the bird model, the animations, and the material, but you have to assemble those pieces together into what's called a Character Definition File, a CDF. And that's one of the things we do with the Character tool. So the first thing is to find this skeleton list. You go down here to Compression, Animations, into the skeleton list, click on that, and you'll see this long list of existing game SDK characters like birds and bats and turtles and all kinds of fun stuff that you can play with. What we want to do is add a new line down here. If you scroll down, you'll see that there's no blank line. So this little aliases button right here, we click on this little arrow and say add. We'll end up with a blank line at the bottom if you scroll down. And you can name this whatever you want. Again, no spaces. I'm going to call it Flappy Player. And then I want to click on this Browse button. And we need to go to Objects, Characters, Flappy Player. And you'll see this .chr file. A CHR file comprises what we call the bones of the animation, the things that actually tells the animated character how to move. So we click on that, and then on the word Open, and that's complete. You'll notice a familiar pattern here in this asterisk, which you already know means unsaved. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this Saved button here in the Properties to update my SkeletonList.xml. Now that we've registered the skeleton, we're ready to actually create the new character. So we're going to go to the File menu and choose the very first line, New Character. And I'm going to put this under Objects, Characters, and Flappy Player. And I'm just going to call this Flappy Player. It'll have a CDF extension name automatically. And you're going to see all these sort of scary looking warning messages over here in the right. Those are not bad. They're just reminding you to complete the process. And it kind of points you in the right direction because we're simply going to follow through these steps over in the properties window. So the first thing is we need to point it to the skeleton. So next to the word skeleton, I'm going to click on this browse button here. And in that objects, characters, flappy player folder, you'll see flappy skill. And it has this kind of funny looking skeleton icon and you see the type is skeleton. That's exactly what we want. And this is the first time you're going to see something that sort of represents the bird. It doesn't look very impressive yet. This is really just the bones. Now, one thing you can do, if you go to Display Options, you can see the Physics Proxy. If you go here, and you'll see the sort of simplified version of our low polygon count bird model. However, for now, I recommend that you keep this off and try not to be too disconcerted by this strange looking object. So I'm going to close my Display Options and I want to assign a material. So I'm going to click on this guy again over on the left. I'm going to go ahead and save just to be safe. And I want to add a material. So I'm going to go right to the next step right after skeleton, a skeleton material. Click on this browse button here. And in that same folder, you'll see a file called low poly bird mat for material, obviously. And then we need to add attachments. So I'm going to click on this counter button next to attachments and click on add. And the type of attachment I want is skin, not a joint, or none of these other things. I'm going to click on the browser button next to geometry. And for the millionth time, and not the last time, we're going to go to this same folder, objects, characters, flappy player, select the .skin file. And finally, you'll get your first look at what the bird model actually looks like. Next thing is we need to pick a material. So next step after that, click on the browser button next to material, back to our well-loved folder. Objects, Characters, Flappy Player, and we have our .mtl file, which looks like this. If you move your split point, you can get an idea what it looks like. And then we want to save. So our character definition file is complete. It has geometry, and it has a material, and it has the bones. The next thing is we need to add the animations. So back over here in our Assets pane, we need to go to Skeletons, Objects, Flappy Player, this folder here. And you'll see this kind of complicated looking file name, flappyscale.chrparams. And back over here on the right, 
you'll notice that there's the number four here. If you click on this caret right here, you're going to see that it's looking for four kinds of animation files. You actually might see three. .caf is an uncompressed animation file that's used for very simple ones, which is our case here. bspace is blend space, which gets into complicated transitions to blend smoothly from one animation to another. If you look at the first person shooter character in Game SDK, he does lots of things. He can jump around things, jump over fences, or climb rocks, and the transitions between climbing and running and sitting and jumping and standing, that's what we call blend space animation. .comb is a combination of blend spaces. And if you like, you can also add another line here by clicking on this button and choosing add and add I underscore CAF, which is a very commonly used file format for compressed, more complicated animation files. So I need to click on this browser button here, this folder. Go back to my objects, characters, flappy player folder. And I need to select it and tell it, hey, that's where my animations live. You're not going to see a file here. You're just telling it what folder you want it to look for. And you may have a quirk here. If this select button isn't highlighted, you may need to actually erase this. This was an issue at one time after you've selected the folder here so that you can click on the select button. So you may see your bird start to move at this point. If you don't see something listed here next to animation events file, you need to click on this button, create new animation events file. I'm going to go back to that same folder, Objects, Characters, Flappy Player, and I'm going to create a file called Flappy Anim Events. You'll need to type this in, and it'll have an extension name of .anim Events automatically. Click on Create. In my case, I already had it, so I'm going to overwrite it, and there it is. And now, if you look at these two animations that should appear under the Animations section of your Assets pane, you can see the only two animations that we have built for this thing. One of them is simply one frame long. It just is the bird gliding. So we'll use this when our bird is soaring downward. And when the player hits the jump key, we'll trigger this flying loop of flapping the wings. I'm going to click on Save here to update this. And for now, we're done with our character tool. So now we want to go back to the editor and our perspective viewport. I'm going to come in nice and close here with one of my saved perspectives. And I want to go to my Create Object tool. And I actually want to create a particle physics object, which is under legacy entities, physics, particle physics. Particle physics objects were actually created to handle things like bullets and arrows, which probably seems like kind of an odd choice, but it'll work out well for our needs. I'm going to drag this into the scene. If it ends up way back somewhere, just use your position here and get it where it needs to be. I want to put it exactly here at 500, 500, 100 and we'll tweak its position here in a second once we actually replace the model. If your particle physics object isn't exactly where you want it to be, use the Snap to Pivot tool. So press the P key a couple times if necessary with the particle physics object already selected, and then click on your Flappy Boy, and it'll snap to exactly where you want it. And with it selected, I want to come down to my Lua properties and Model. Click on the Browse button. Find my Flappy Player folder under Objects, Characters, Flappy Player and I want to select my character file. You'll know you've got the right thing because you'll see the bird here. You don't want the skeleton and you don't want the mesh. So you can already see that we're probably going to need to scale this thing up. I'm going to make sure my X, Y, and Z are locked together. Try a, a bit larger scale here. It's going to be hard to know exactly how big you need it until you get it flying through the pipes. Two looks kind of okay right now, but we'll see once we get things moving. And you'll notice that it's also rotated in a funny direction. Now, here's where things are going to get a little bit conceptually challenging. We're going to use our sphere just as it is with all of the logic that's attached to it. Otherwise, we'd have to go into every single node in our flow graph and reassign this bird entity and then be able to get rid of the sphere. So we're going to use the sphere as what we call a capsule, our controller for our animated mesh. Our animated mesh is really just there for show, but the sphere itself is still going to handle all the physics. It's a, what we call a geometric primitive. So it's really useful for physics calculations to work against without having to work them too hard. So when it comes to my bird, I'm going to set my mass to be off, negative one. And I also want to make sure that this constant orientation is disabled. The trick is, of course, we don't want to see the sphere anymore, but we still need it to be there for physics purposes. We can't hide it like this because then nothing will happen. So what we need is a material that's invisible. 
So I'm going to go to my Material Editor Legacy, or you can use Material Editor if you prefer to explore that. And I'm going to go ahead and select my Flappy Boy, my old one, and retrieve the current material with this button right here. Move this over. And I don't need this to have any kind of texture like this, so I'm actually going to create a new material. And I'm literally going to call it Invisible. And I am going to keep it in my Materials folder. Does it kind of make sense? You'll see that I have one there already since I've built this before. And very simply, all I need to do is change the shader to no draw. And now I have an invisible bird. So my entity is still there, physics is still acting on it, but it's simply not rendered. I'm going to go ahead and save my material, and I'm done with the material editor for now. Now I'm actually going to suggest, as I did in the book, that you give this bird, this animated mesh, a name that's consistent with the way things work in CryEngine 5, which is what we call entity components. The reason that I'm not teaching you entity components in this beginner's course is, first of all, it's a complex topic. It's a little hard to wrap your mind around. And second of all, we can't control entity components with FlowGraph because they're a new system and there's a new visual scripting language currently in development called Schematic, which you may have heard of. And that's what you use to control entity components currently. But the idea of building up a complex entity one component at a time, for instance, a mesh, animations, physics, colliders, etc. That is the way that entity components works, and it's something you're going to be getting to know. So I'm literally going to call this thing my flappy mesh component. So now that I have this component, I'm actually going to build my first entity component by clicking on this button, add component, right here, and I'm going to give it a rigid body. And now if you look down here, we have a whole new section here called rigid body, and we have built our first entity component system. I'm going to go ahead and save my level. The next thing we need to do is add animations in FlowGraph. So what we need to do is make the flapping wings animation trigger every time the player presses the jump key. So if you go to this section and find your node where you have the action listener listening for the jump, we're going to need to do something different now with this pressed output. So for the first time, we're going to go to our animations group here, and we want to add a play animation node. And I'm obviously going to need more space. I'm going to just arrange things here a bit. And I'm going to take my pressed key and trigger the start with it. I need to go back here and select my flappy mesh component and assign that as the entity. And I need to select the animation. Double click our animation here, click on the browse button. And of course, I want to use the fly loop. There are a couple of important things to this play animation node. One of the most important in terms of blending from one animation to the other is this almost done percentage. So in our case, each press of the jump key is going to trigger a new loop, and it happens to be 30 frames of animation in our case. But let's say the player presses that jump key before that animation is complete. Well, this almost done percentage says how complete does this animation have to be before you're allowed to trigger this start again? without it looking jumpy because it skips a bunch of frames in the animation. So we're going to go ahead and leave it at 85%. It will work well for our purposes. But in the future, this is one of those things you're going to want to experiment with specifically for your animations. We also have a very important property called force update that we need to enable. We are not looping infinitely. We're going to use one press key per loop of this animation. So if 30 frames of the game pass, this animation will complete and stop, and it'll revert to the idle, or we're going to make it revert to the idle. So I'm going to copy and paste this node and make another one for my next animation, which of course is going to be my idle. And I'm going to trigger that on the done. So every time this is done, the default behavior is for it to go ahead and switch to the idle animation, which simply sits there. And you might want to put a little comment box around this. Something like that. We're almost ready for a test here. There's two more things that we have to do. First of all, in my case, my bird model came in rotated, so I need to rotate it 90 degrees this way. So I'm going to take my flappy mesh component, my rotate tool with snap turned on. I've got 45 degree increments, and I'm going to spin it 90 degrees like that so it faces the right way. If you're not sure which way is which, you may need to zoom in on the bird to see its head. It's kind of subtle. 
And the last thing is I need to link this flappy mesh component to the bird by dragging it on it. So again, this is our driver, our controller that handles all the physics, even though it's invisible. And this is just our show. This is our animation and our mesh. Okay, I think we're ready for a test. I'm gonna go back to this view, full screen, save and test. And what you should see is each time you press the jump key, we get a flap of the wings. When you let go, if you let the animation complete, after 30 frames, it just glides. You may need to tweak the mass depending on how much you scaled your bird, and you may want to finish your scaling first. Now at this point, what you need to do is test carefully and look at exactly when collisions happen. And in my case, you'll notice that I can get very close to the bottoms of the pipes, where my wings are actually touching, but I'm not triggering a collision. But if I get close to the top pipe, I trigger a collision easily. So to help you troubleshoot and fine tune the position of your flappy mesh component relative to this invisible sphere that's detecting collisions, you're gonna to wanna to turn on this toolbar. Right click up here in your toolbars and choose view modes. And what we're looking for is helpers. And that's this guy over here, which I often confuse with this one. They look very similar. If you roll over it, you'll get a tooltip that says draw helpers and you'll see the physics proxies. So go ahead and turn that on, go back into gameplay mode, and now you'll see the physics proxy, the representation of the sphere, and you can see that my bird needs to be moved up relative to the sphere, otherwise I'm gonna keep colliding when I get close to the top, but not colliding nearly enough when I get close to the bottom. You can also assign a translucent material, like a glass, to the sphere temporarily, which is what I did in the screen capture in the book. So all I'm going to do is take my flappy mesh component and I'm going to move it up so it's centered inside that sphere like this. I don't have to worry about detecting collisions out here with a fat sphere because there's nothing to collide with. The pipes are strictly above and below my bird in this case. The other thing that I recommend doing is going back to your character tool like this and slowing down the animation. So if you go back to your playback controls in the lower left hand corner, Click on this speed and change it to something quite slow. This is quarter speed. You'll be able to see that the way that this animation is constructed, the wings go almost straight over and straight under the bird. So the length of the wings are basically the height of the sphere that we need. And the last thing is that you can adjust the size of this sphere depending on how hard you want the game to be. You don't necessarily need to have it as big as the wingspan. If you want to be a little bit more forgiving, you can keep it kind of scaled down here. So with those tools, you can adjust the scale and position of your bird. Just keep in mind that you want to test carefully and you may need to adjust the mass if you scale your actual flappy boyd sphere. And that is it for chapter 13, Animated Bird.